Good afternoon once again. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode 743. And the title today is How to Heal Your Inner Wounds So You Can Love Again. And I'm calling it Inner Wounds because it ain't, it ain't the scars and external stuff. But anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. Before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day um, and why this is happening. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work and also what inspired these talks back in 2016, which is now still going at episode 743, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today the topic is about healing the inner wounds. And I did some talks, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't seen the talks I did the last two days, I've been, I've been referencing Rocket Man actually, and I'll probably do it again today. Because in that movie, besides being a great movie of music and about John's, Elton John's journey, it spoke to this piece in different ways. So yesterday was about looking for uh, finding to love yourself again. So the day before that was about um, it was about something else. <laughs> I can't remember now. But today I'm going to talk about the fact about how to heal the how to, the how to heal the inner wounds. I'm going to talk about healing the inner wounds now. It's about how to. So let me preface it by saying that it's rare you can walk away from a relationship if you have any care or concern in your heart without feeling wounded or wounding somebody else and carrying the judgments about the wounds you've cast. Because judgments about what you did to somebody else is wounding as well. So it's not just feeling like heartbreak, wounded, torn apart torn asunder, um, never raise a love again, feeling stunted, suppressed, all these different things. It's also the judgments that we carry, either about how we were treated or how we treated somebody else, because those of us who are caring people do have feelings, do have desires to make amends. So it's good to have that place of understanding. So I'm going to speak to both of those. Hi, Mary. Happy Friday to you too. Um, oh, and if you haven't seen my broadcast, if you haven't seen me before, these are Facebook Lives first. Then go onto my business page and onto YouTube later on. So I'll give the links, links and way to get to those at the end of the broadcast. If you want to interact with me, you want to join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, that's the way to do it um, on Facebook. So healing the inner wounds comes under several different ways and paths depending on what's going on. Let me start with the judgment piece first because that's what I ended with. So if you are carrying judgments against, again, how you um, were treated or how you treated somebody else, there is a path to get to that. Somebody was question, sorry, can you can you really get over stuff like that? Yes, you can. It isn't necessarily like just go, that was over, I'm glad it's been done. It's fine. Because even if you've gone through a relationship where you feel like you escaped from something, there's still likely to be judgments, feelings, upsets running around inside ourselves at the same after that effect, after after that moment rather. And the thing is, when we go through relationships that are traumatic energetically and we feel like we escaped them, those wounds have been put in, but maybe not so overtly. So you feel a bit, so there's actually discrete or more subtle levels of toxicity in our system. So first of all, the judgment piece, I'll speak to that one first, is then we'll get to the emotional piece after that. The judgment piece is one of these things that as human beings we tend to do, it's very rare amongst humanity to have somebody that doesn't have any judgment. It's quite often you find people who have judgments don't care about them, but it's rare to find somebody who has no judgment whatsoever in the world. So in relationships and things break apart, whether you're the one who does the breaking up or the one who's broken up with, it's quite likely there's gonna be judgments. And if you're a caring person, even when you break up with somebody else, as much as there might be a feeling of relief and everything's fine, I'm glad, glad I'm over that, there's still likely to be some judgments about maybe you didn't treat them right or you did something wrong. So there's gonna be judgments on both sides. Judgment is a mental construct that creates emotional pressure meaning that a judgment is something we carry in our heads but it affects our hearts metaphorically speaking so when you're carrying judgment it's a way of suppressing your ability to love it's a way of holding yourself back from being fully free and it's a means to punish ourselves resentment and guilt for example are forms of judgment and to use an analogy i talked about before resentment is one of these um experiences that sucks <laughs> to put it simply to use an analogy that you've talked about before or, or, or a meta 
analogy, metaphor, whatever it's called, that basically to have resentment against other people is um, is basically holding judge is is. Let me get the metaphor right. Taking poison, expecting the other person to die. So when you have resentment, you're actually t hurting yourself, not them. Again, taking poison, expecting the other person to die is what resentment really is. So judgment is in the similar vein, but not quite as, maybe as quite as laser focused. But the same idea, because judgment is toxic. So what you're doing if you have resentment or guilt or judgment about a relationship breakup, something like that, you're, you're actually making a system more toxic because you're adding a negative energy to your system. I don't mean that as a woo-woo thing, I mean physically. You can manifest illness from this. So this is important stuff to learn. The one true way to heal, release the judgments, resentments, and guilt is that wonderful thing that we don't like talking about for a lot of people is called forgiveness. And I don't mean lip service like, yeah, yeah, do this, whatever, and you say forgive and all that sort of stuff. No, I don't mean that. What I mean is when you actually viscerally experience the joy and the release of forgiveness, we can come to a place of compassion and allow yourself to be free. And so when you get to the place where you can forgive fully, then the judgments become released because you no longer carry that burden around. I should say when you release the judgments, then you don't create, carry the burden around anymore. And that gives you freedom. So that's one piece, which is forgiveness. And I'll tell you more about that and how to do that later on, because I've got some things I want to tell you about. Secondly, um, sorry, I'm just, just I'm going to go back. Um, for, okay, the forgiveness piece. In my book, I talk about, and my book, by the way, it's called 50 Ways to Love Your, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, yeah, and it talks about forgiveness. I know, it's strange, isn't it? It's actually 50 principles for healthy relationships for men and women, couples and singles. And in there, I talk about forgiveness, and I have a link in there to get a, um, a download from a website, which is a, there's two forgiveness worksheets. One of them is my own one I took from my grad school, and I've edited it around myself. The second one is the Radical Forgiveness Worksheet from um, Colin Tipping's book. If you want those, I'll put the link at the, back, at the bottom end of the broadcast. You can get those yourself and you can work through it yourself. Although forgiveness for me works better when you work with somebody who can counsel you through it and walk you through it. So just let you know that. Okay, forgiveness piece, judgments. Now I get to the emotional piece. The emotional wounding that we carry around after a breakup is deeper because it's usually on the energetic level of almost like sticking a knife in ourselves. I can feel that painful. It can feel like a heart rending ache that is just like a, a wound in your, in your heart, I and mean, it can hurt like hell. So when you have that emotional wounding, 90% of the time, it will be tied to judgment, self-recrimination, self-judgment. Maybe you blame yourself for not doing the right thing. Maybe you blame yourself for the breakup. Maybe you hold permanent judgment against them because they did, wrong, did you wrong. All these different things that we do, again, all judgments, underneath that have an emotional quotient or an emotional quality. This isn't fun stuff, I know. This is not my lightest talk, just to be clear about. I do recommend, again, watching my last two broadcasts about uh, Rocket Man because they were a bit lighter, even though they spoke to this direction. But I thought I'd get in the trenches and dig this one up because this is a big one to have. I had to say that just because you're feeling the pressure building. So emotional distress, emotional comfort, isn't something that can be released with words, at least not from my experience. The forgiveness piece, yes, that's a... That's a process to go through with words but it's still undergirded by love and by compassion which is why it needs to be done the right way you can't just the way you can't just do forgiveness going well I forgive myself and I'm fine it doesn't land until you can connect to the heart connect to the love connect to the compassion for yourself that that's where the love that's where the forgiveness comes through so the emotional piece which is deep in that it can feel like it's you've been scarred or wounded which is understandable because you've been through some emotional traumatic experience that's not always just tied to relationships, by the way. It happens other places too. But the reality is that the starting for that, well, excuse me, I'm just releasing, there's no, there's no real order to this either way. Just like grief, which is another experience you can have after a bad breakup, it's an unspecific order of experiences. Like in, in there's, there's things five stages of grief, but they're not in, they're not ordered one through five. They go randomly and repeat and recycle and duplicate. It goes for, it goes, that's the way forgiveness, work, forgiveness, sorry, the way that grief works. And with the emotional upset inside, it's a similar feeling. There's no real set path how to heal it. But the best thing I can say to you, if you're dealing with that still of yourself, is to take time to actually be caring for yourself, meaning that you simply love yourself through it. 
and this is going to sound extremely simplistic I understand that but the truth is you must be willing to be gentle with yourself because for some people they go well I'm going to just stick a bandaid over it and get on with life and make these happen but what's happening is they're dragging their wounded self through so they're not at full strength not at full freedom and not able to express fully in their own loving so to have a real understanding of your own um, acceptance of yourself your own forgiveness of yourself and your own compassion for yourself is the way through it these breakups that happen because we do go through breakups require us to be more loving with ourselves I talked a couple of days ago um, I think it was two days ago but how I keep looking for love out there and the truth is love is always inside this is one of the reasons why you need to remember this because self-love as much as I use it as a thing about to build up to have a healthy relationship going out in the world it's also a tool to facilitate the healing of the wounds from past breakups and it sounds so simple and I know it is simple in a way but boy we don't we don't do the work we don't spend enough time loving ourselves being compassionate with ourselves and appreciating who we are to heal those past wounds there isn't an easy way to do it I mean I'm not saying it's like you can't do step one two three four five and you're done having said that <laughs> um, some practitioners of NL NLP neuro linguistic programming are skillful enough to help you rewire programming beliefs and judgments inside yourself I personally have a feeling that the forgiveness processes I talk about and also the self-love practice I apply are more effective long-term because they get you get deeper into the tissue of your feelings or the feelings in your tissue something like that but NLP is a great tool I was going to say tool set tool kit let me, let me change that one slightly I use NLP in some of my work as well but it's not my primary focus if you are interested in seeking out help from somebody who's an NLP practitioner please do your best to make sure they have other skills besides that because some people take NLP because it's so powerful as a toolkit in its own right people think it's all they ever need and then every problem in the world can be solved with it which is not true so I'm speaking to how to do some things yourself which you can do is love yourself care about yourself do gentle things for yourself part of that is letting the healing happen the issues in the tissues yeah nice one Mary <laughs> in a way yes the emotional um, toxicity the emotional I'm trying what this means I'm, I'm got a word for that <laughs> the emotion <laughs> the emotional upsets are residing in your cells they're in your being this is why I said about judgments can actually cause illness because what judgments and resentment and guilt can do is actually impact your physiology they can change the way you relate to yourself and cause toxicity in your system so you can get sick from it I've heard stories about certain diseases caused by emotional depression um, judgments and stuff like that I'm not speaking to that because I'm not a medical practitioner so I don't want to speak to that myself however I'm aware that if you do learn how to forgive yourself and you do learn to love yourself through and let the, he let the wounds heal you'll become much happier that much I can do promise so again forgiveness is something you can do there are a couple of worksheets I can send you I'll put the link in the comments so you can get the discover the um, uh, which cause things the forgiveness worksheets for the self forgiveness and for the radical forgiveness worksheets and I also put a link in the comments for a couple of things if you're someone who's been carrying wounds for a long time I have a I, I've been talking about self love practice for a while I have a self-love guided meditation practice with two audio meditations an AM and a PM with a work workbook that is a guide to help you love yourself period love yourself period <laughs> however if you're dealing with if you're facing let me say this another way if you're feeling that you're not ready for love because you feel wounded inside this will be even more helpful self-love is not just for you to use to build up that strength it's for you also to help you clear out the wounds and the scars inside self-love is a very powerful um, healing agent for that way as well so as well as being able to help you love more and be more available it helps you love yourself as well helps you be more powerful that's one piece two yeah forgiveness self-love and thirdly I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk if this has been stirring up stuff for you if you're feeling like you're ready to go deeper and finding out how you can get aligned to your heart how you can really resolve the wounds from the past and finally learn to love yourself again then it's time we can have a conversation so I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk so there'll be three things in the comments 
I'll figure them out and put them out there. It will help you learn how to be more whole, to love yourself more fully, and to really come to a place of wholeness again. Because you, let me say it this way, you deserve to love fully, you deserve to be loved fully, and by being able to heal yourself first, you'll be available to both of those. So if this is something that speaks to you, let's talk. If you need the help, that is, by the way. If you already know I do this, then you know you might help. Um, I think that covers it. The two components, so the forgiveness for the mental with the emotional component, the, the healing of the wounds inside. It's possible to be um, more loving now than you were before. It's possible to be more available. Oh, there's the other piece, by the way. When you do the forgiveness and when you do the self-healing and when you learn to love yourself fully again, you will tend to choose better relationships. That's a side effect, by the way. The quality of relationships you choose going forward will tend to be way more fulfilling happy, uplifting, and loving than your previous ones when you do this. If you don't do this work, if you don't do the forgiveness work and learn to heal the wounds, you'll be carrying these wounds around into the future and your future relationships will generally not be any better because you'll be recycling the same pattern, the same pain, the same wounds again and again and again. I think you get where I'm going with this. Raise your standards by doing the work inside and the relationship quality you retract will be much better than you had in the past. That makes sense. So, having said all that, I hope this made sense to you. This has landed. Oh, hi, Lacey. Nice to see you. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you got value from this. Um, yeah. So, I hope this has been of help to you. So, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays for all of my broadcasts go onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Author, and you can like my page and follow them there. And also on my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby. My name is everywhere on social media. Um, it's at Instagram. I've still got a problem with Instagram. Damn. If you're an Instagram expert, message me. I, got, I need some help. Um, <laughs> especially if you work for Instagram, that'd be great. Anyway, so my YouTube channel, getting off track here. here. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which you please subscribe to. The, um, yeah, that's Colin Tepe's book. That's the worksheet I have is one of the things I offer because Radical Forgiveness and Radical Self-Forgiveness is a newer book, a very good book. So yes, you're right, you're right Mary. Um, YouTube channel Barry Selby please subscribe playlist messages for the masculine okay got that one out of the way it was sitting in my back of my head so um, that is about it again I'll put links in the comments for a discover session with me from a talk for the self love practice that I recommend highly that will help you get on your feet to 30 day practice and also um, the forgiveness worksheets yeah I'll figure that one out I gotta find, I gotta find the link is in there somewhere with that, I thank you for watching. If you have questions, thoughts, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, that's about it. Love yourself more than you did today. Love yourself more than you did yesterday. I'll say it that way. And watch how your life will change if you do that every day. If you do this every day, it'll be cumulative, basically. So love yourself more every day is a great practice. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye.